my children? How are you children? Christmas for the Ekutuku family was always a time of celebration. Celebration of the birth of Christ and the love of friends and family. Hi, Dad. Yo, I've got a goat for you. But this time, things were different. On the surface, everything seemed fine. But inside, Daniel was boiling with anger and unforgiveness. <laughs> he had recently fought with his wife and was still harboring deep resentment. That I had a quarrel with my wife on Thursday. And the little quarrel I had with my wife, I frowned on her. Then on, 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 on Thursday night, she was knocking on my door. I couldn't open the door for her. Then on Friday morning, she now knocked on my door. No, on Friday morning, she woke up and I come out. She said, Daddy, good morning. I did not accept. I did not talk to I didn't talk to her. I kept quiet on her and I left on Friday morning. She offended me. She did something wrong. And I, I was angry on her. I was annoyed. Daniel's anger had so blinded him that he had not even seen his son that day. Mommy. Yeah, my son. Where is dad? He went to, uh, to deliver God to grandfather in a word. Okay, but how are you about that? Soon, my son, go and play. Daniel's thoughts that day were somewhat distracted, almost as if his mind were somewhere else. As the sun started dipping down, Daniel began to speed up, wanting to get home. He was still very angry. As he headed down one of the dirt roads, he reached down to apply the brakes, but there was no response. Daniel began to pump the pedals furiously, but to no avail. So 
he came back uh, lamenting uh, auntie mommy that the uh, pastor is dead that he saw a group of people carrying him on his uh, head going moving down there so the moment i heard him screaming and i heard that pastor is dead i knew he's my husband so i from that upstairs i ran down i began to run towards the place where the accident happened when nega arrived at the scene of the accident she learned that Daniel was still alive, but in a very serious condition. Bystanders had taken him to the local hospital where Nega found him. After being rushed to the intensive care unit at Barunyu Hospital, Daniel refused to be treated. Instead, he insisted that he be taken to his family doctor, all the way out in Oweri. I must go to Dr. Mizrake. He's our family doctor at Oweri. Family doctor? It's what my husband wants. The hospital surgeon told Daniel's wife in no uncertain terms that he was in no state to travel given the extent of his injuries. In the head. Yeah. He's concussed. He's confused now. Mm -hmm. And he's in no composition to decide what's best for him. For the but despite the surgeon's pleas, Nika was adamant. It's what my husband wants. If he leaves now, I'm afraid he will die. That's and I'm not certain of that. Then they discharged us that night. They said I should sign that I'm uh, taking him on my own risk. Then I had to do it. So we took him to his uh, private doctor to worry. On our way to that place, uh, he called me that I should take care of the church and the ministry and the children. the children and the ministry. Shh. Don't try to talk. I have good dear house. Please don't talk. Uh, Some are called early and I'm... When the ambulance that took me from the hospital and my wife, they were on a high speed rushing me to another better hospital. So, um, suddenly, I, I, I had some feelings and um, for me to look up, I saw two angels. When Daniel saw the two angels, he wanted to let his wife know, but the angel indicated that he should keep silent. Immediately, Daniel's power of speech was taken from him. Neka began to cry, fearing that Daniel would die. The angels took Daniel by his shoulders and lifted him out of the ambulance. Suddenly, Daniel found himself in another place with one of the angels. Daniel, I have a lot to show you. As he looked out, Daniel saw a place where a multitude of people gathered and their appearance was like that of the angels. Their color was pure white, and their bodies seemed to glow with radiance. Because of their similar appearance, Daniel thought he was seeing a gathering of the angels. Meanwhile, the ambulance rushed to St. Eunice's Clinic in Oweri. Neka and a friend of the family waited with bated breath as Dr. Jose Anibunwa examined the patient. Where's Nega? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But there's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry. 
This is the death certificate. Uh, give it to the mortician. He'll take care of you, okay? I'm sorry. Then that place, the doctor came and they checked him. After checking him, he discovered that uh, he's dead. That uh, no, mo no respiratory organ, that everything is seized, that we should go away or we should deposit him in his own uh, mortuary. Then to me, I disbelieved him. I said, no, that my husband is not dead. He cannot leave me and go like that. This is not the gathering of the angels, Daniel. This is the gathering of the saints. The differences between the saints and the angels were subtle. Their color is a pure, brilliant white from their hair down to their feet. But the difference is that the angels have wings while the saints do not. The saints were worshiping God. They worshiped God with one voice and raised their hands as they were singing. Daniel heard the sound of many instruments and the sounds were like nothing he had encountered before. He longed to join these people and moved over towards them, but the angels stopped him. Daniel. Don't go. I have a lot to show you. Take this file and record everything you see. The multitude that Daniel saw were all looking at a bright light that shone like the sun. It was the source of all the light there. A very thick heavy light coming upon them there. Now, they were all looking at that light as if they are seeing something there. But to me, I cannot look at that light. Can you, I cannot look at that light because um, it's so dangerous to my eyes. So I tried to dodge to look through. But they were looking through. But to me, I cannot look through. Daniel's body was taken to the mortuary where Burlington Manu, the local mortician, arranged the burial. So we start the environment procedures. I will need a thousand naira. Then you get me the gloves, his dresses, and you get a coffin ready. Then you give me two days in Taba before you come for the collection. Is that all right by you? It was on the 30th of uh, November, 2002. That was the day they brought uh, one Reverend Daniel uh, Eki. He died on accident uh, case. That was the day. Brought by the father known as Mr. Lawrence uh, Eki Inhuba. Then after the treatment, I gave some injections, some meals about, this is five mil uh, syringe. I gave about six syringe to the fingers and the toes to treat before the embalmment. The 30th of November 2001 was a date forever etched on Nenka Ekechukwu's heart and mind. In fact, she remembers it well. Uh, that very day, uh, it was terrible and horrible, and I was sorrowing. Then the word of God appeared to me in Hebrew 11.35. Women received their dead body back to life. So when I read that scripture, I said, eh, dead bodies back to life, eh, dead bodies, dead bodies. I began to meditate over the word of God. I said, dead bodies, my husband is one of the dead bodies back to life. I must take him to Bonke's crusade so that he will come back to life. Let's visit the mansions Jesus prepared for his people. Immediately, Daniel was in a new place with radiant mansions as far as the eye could see.
It was incomparable to anything he knew on earth. Though the appearance resembled buildings, the structure was unusual, not made of any earthly materials. They seemed to be alive, moving. Daniel, Jesus has finished his work. The mansions are ready, but the saints are not ready. There was a sound of beautiful singing and worship, and it seemed to come from all around. Daniel wondered where the singing was coming from, because he could see no people there. Daniel, the worship song you're hearing has been sung by the flowers. As he looked, Daniel saw the flowers swaying in response to the music. It actually seemed as if they were clapping their hands, shouting and praising God. They are waiting for the saints. It was around uh, between 12 1 midnight when I came out. I started hearing some noise over here. I wondered maybe the churches, uh, I mean the church people over there, maybe they're having crusade or something like that. And I keep on hearing singing and praises, clapping. I wondered. One of my mind told me to come down, maybe that happens in the mortuary. now going to visit hell. Can you see the gates of hell? The angel raised his hand and as he brought it down, the gates ripped open with a great noise. Daniel could hear the crying and wailing of many people, but he could not see any of them. And then a light shone from the angel's body into the darkness so that Daniel could see more clearly. There were many people there, but unlike the souls in heaven, the appearance of these people was as it had been on earth. They were from every race, culture, and nationality. Every person seemed trapped in their own personal torment, a torment which would go on for eternity, 
and they could not communicate with others. The sounds of crying and wailing were almost deafening. Suddenly, they all seemed to become aware of Daniel and started crying to him for help. And they called to Daniel only as if they could not see the angel. After the pastor made the statement, the force that was tormenting him seemed to increase. The people had flesh, but no blood, and they almost seemed to be on fire, although no flames could be seen. was a group of people that were eating their own flesh. They would vomit what they ate and their flesh grew back. This carried on in an endless cycle of torment. Those people you see eating themselves, they practiced witchcraft while they were on earth. They specialized in eating human flesh and now they'll eat themselves forever they are reaping what they sowed. That place is not good for any human being created by God to go. And God did not make that place for human being. He made that place for the devil and his agents. But stubborn human beings who will disobey God like the devil will also go there. God have no mind to put any human being in hell. It's a dangerous and a deadly place he made for the devil and his people. What was to follow was an earth-shattering statement by the angel. Daniel couldn't have imagined in his wildest dreams that he would hear the judgment. Daniel, if the book of your life was to be closed today, this would be your portion. No. I'm a pastor. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. <laughs> and I preached all over this, this country. I mean, the, the country in which I'm... This, this, this can't be. No, no. This can't... Enough. Daniel, on your way to the first hospital, you were asking God to forgive you, but you would not forgive your wife, and your sins have not been forgiven. It is a matter of reaping what you've sown. You cannot sow unforgiveness to your wife and reap forgiveness from God. Oh. And immediately he made that statement, my spirit convinced me that what the angel told me or the judgment on me is true. I didn't say no because I remembered that I had a quarrel with my wife on Thursday. And the little quarrel I had with my wife, I frowned on her. Then on, 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 on Thursday night, she was knocking on my door. I couldn't open the door for her. Then on Friday morning, she now knocked on my door. No, on Friday morning, she woke up and I come out. She said, Daddy, good morning. I did not accept. I did not talk to, I didn't talk to her. I kept quiet on her and I left on Friday morning. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Because my wife provoked me, she offended me, she did something wrong, and I, I was angry on her, I was annoyed. So I didn't accept her great. I left on Friday. On my way coming back, I had the accident and died. So now the angel told me that 
my wife offended me and I did not forgive my wife. And I come to God and ask God to forgive me that I am not forgiving, that this place should be my portion. I now cry. I did not say no. I did not reject the judgment. The judgment was true to me because I know in my heart I was angry with my wife. I was trying, I was thinking of what to do on her. I was thinking of my wife slapped me. My wife slapped me. What am I going to do to her? What am I going to do? I was thinking of what to do. So in my heart, I was annoyed. And I believe God was judging my heart. So he said to me that I didn't forgive my wife, that I'm not forgiving. So while I was crying, 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 shouting and shouting, I was not crying. That, that I was only saying, you see how I destroy my soul? Look at how I destroy my soul. While I was shouting and crying, I was afraid. Tears was all over me. I was panicking because... That place is not good for anyone. And, and the way everything was looking, nothing, if, if God went to put me inside hell, nothing would prevent him. Because um, while we are discussing, some group of people, thousands of people, we are being sent into hell. Then in me, I concluded in my heart that I must do something to make sure that my husband is revived, that I believe that uh, he must come back to life if I should do, make a step of faith, that something good might come out of it. Papa? Papa? What? We'll take his body to church. What? Guinea? We must take Daniel's body to church. I die, my daughter. Daniel is dead and he's gone. He will come back to life. I know it. Neko's father-in-law dismissed her request to remove the body from the mortuary. But meanwhile, on the other side of town, things were working miraculously in her favor. As early as 5.30 to 6, I left my house to, with the address tracing the dad which in uh, Amimo Ikeduro. Then when I asked of the, the man, Reverend, I mean, the man, Mr. Lawrence uh, A.K. Ihuba, then they directed me to him and I told him to come and remove the corpse that they brought inside my mortuary. They claimed that he died on accident uh, case because during that time he was bleeding. Yeah. Then I asked him to come and remove the body. I saw some kind of uh, signs. I don't know what is wrong with the cops. I don't want anything to hurt me because this job is a tedious job. It's a dangerous uh, job. Morning, job. What brings you so early? I want that body out of my mug. Why? Why? Things happened last night. What thing happened? What happened? Sounds of music coming from his room. Oh, calm down. The music may have come from the village. There were villagers marrying. What has that got to do with the dead? Not that. What exactly? This is no dream. There were music coming from his room. Your man, tell me, were you drinking last night or what? I didn't drink anything. I mean every bit of it. And we took him from the mortuary, we dressed him up and uh, put him inside the gasket. Then we took off from Oweri. Then we continued coming down to Onesha. Um, his glorious cathedral, Grace of God Mission, Anambara State. That was a glory, Omuleri Road. We are Reverend Bonke, Rehad Bonke, serving crusade. That let Rehad Bonke pray for him that he will raise again. <laughs> I started laughing. So this cops, they say, yes, okay, give me the tally. She went and bought the tally and cleared their bill. Then we dress the body. When I dress the cops, I call on my assistant to join me. They hired an ambulance. They went and bought a coffin, the white coffin inside the group there. I said, okay, I'll go with two people. Let me witness. Maybe it is the power of God or anything that happens, I will know. So when we arrived there with our um, siren, there was tension all over. Security people came. 
both the church security, the one they signed from local government, even from federal government, even the one that came with Bonke. Some of them, they, they thought that we were um, evil people that came to bomb uh, Bonke at the first time. They were pushing me left, right and center. Then I was withstanding their pushing and their torment. They were abusing me and calling me all sorts of names. Then so at the time I told them that he's dead, he's even a man of God. You people should not um, kill me. He's a man of God, only that he had an accident and uh, died, that they should allow us to take him inside so that Bonke can pray for him. And I believe that he can come back to life. The security guards refused them entry into the premises, thinking they might have a bomb in the casket. The procession was redirected to a facility in the back of the church. Daniel was taken out of the casket and laid on a table. People started praying for him, praying for resurrection. Then the angel said to me that he's sending me back to the world to go and warn this generation because this is going to be the last warning to this generation. As prayers was going on, then his heart began to pant. Life began to come in his heart. They continued praying, we are praying, we are praying. As all these things were going on, he began to breathe gradually, but his body was still stiff. I saw myself being held of a lot of people. Oh, I was naked, I was wearing only trousers, they pulled all my dress, I saw a crowd of people, more than 20,000 people. I looked my left, right, everywhere. People were shouting, crying everywhere. Some, some was praising God, some was crying, some was, I was looking around, I couldn't understand what was happening. Because to me, I was falling down and I fell into pit. And to me, when I opened my eyes, I, was see, I saw all hands was grabbing me. They, they said to me that I jumped up. I saw this big cathedral. It's a very big cathedral. I looked by my right, my left, my front and my back. Everywhere was full of people. And some people were shouting, some were saying coughing, some say mortuary, some say three days. I couldn't understand what was happening because I, my experience there is not more than 15 minutes, so I don't know what they call about three days. To me, there was no night, there was no day, there was, it was only that moment I was into. I now uh, said to my wife, yes, what is happening? She said I should keep quiet until when we get to the house. Brought me back to my house, this place with my wife. So when we get inside the bedroom, uh, that's been you know, on 2nd of December, I asked my wife, what is happening? What, 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 what about coughing and two days and mortuary? What is happening? Then my wife now begin to look at my body where they injected chemical and she said, Dad, did you know you was in mortuary three days? And this the death certificate, you know. Uh, while I left the ambulance, uh, they, they still went to the hospital. So the doctor now confirmed uh, that I, I, I have died. They now use their equipment check. According to, you can see, uh, they, they check the heartbeats, everything, the, 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 the eye pupil, everything. According to the doctor, he, after checking everything, he now confirmed that I was totally dead. He now gave them certificate that I sh they should remove me. You can see it here, say, uh, uh, remove for mortuary. 